Right, it's a video on depressions, which are low pressure systems, uh, which the UK is hit with roughly a hundred of these every year. They're dominant in the winter months, and they bring that wet, windy weather that's stereotypical of our country. They are formed, or they're brought over by the jet stream, um, which is the boundary between the, those top two cells, the polar cell and the feral cell. So it's brought over by that. Um, they classically hit the west coast of the UK first, which is partly why it's wetter in the west. They also mostly hit the north of the country, um, hence why places like Scotland and North England are usually wetter than England. So I'm just going to run through um, how they form, and then the kind of weather you'd expect to find uh, at each point and the kind of question you get. So, if we start off with this, you start off with two cells. So you've got your polar cell, you've got your feral cell. They have warm and cold air. Now warm and cold air don't mix. They're like oil and water. They don't mix at all well. So what you end up getting is a, a line between them called a front. Now where you get these fronts, warm air will always rise above cold air because it is less dense. So what ends up happening is warm air starts to move above the cold air. Now it's spinning in this direction because the Coriolis effect, which is due to the spin of the Earth, is also happening. So these things are spinning anti-clockwise. Now, what happens, and this becomes the classic shape of uh, depression, is that you get this shark's fin shape. So what will always happen is the warm air will be rising above the cold air as it spins, forming what we call a warm front, which is the point where the warm air uh, is the, the, the front of the warm air. So the warm front is going to occur here. What you then get is this little shark's fin of warm air behind it. This is then followed up by a cold front. So this is the boundary where the cold air is coming in. And this is the sort of stereotypical shark's fin that you'd expect to see in a depression, particularly if you're asked about it in the exam question. So this is ultimately due to the warm air rising above the cold air, the cold air here spinning around catching up with it, um, which means that you always get in a depression two fronts, and there's always a warm then a cold front. In the UK, these will always move from west to east due to the jet streams. They're always going to come from west to east. They're always going to be brought across from the Atlantic, so they're going to be wet, they're going to have a warm, then a cold front. So to a certain extent, you can just learn this, because it's always the same thing for the UK. So this is what you then get. This is your, this is your full bro, full blown depression. You've got your shark's fin shape. <coughs> the winds will always be blowing in this clockwise direction. The fastest winds, if this is the centre of the low, so this, the, this is the point of the lowest air, air pressure, the fastest winds will always be directed to the south of it, just about here but it's always been moving in this direction. You can have a warm front, warm sector, cold front. So you can then, what you need to look at is the type of weather that occurs at each point. It's worth noting that these things will eventually die out. So a cold front moves faster than a warm front. So the cold front is always catching up with the warm front. Where those two fronts meet, the air pressure ends up equalizing, which leads to what we call an occluded front. This is neither warm nor cold, but is a very weak front, so you'll get a bit of weather there. And where you see the occluded front, that's a purple colour on your weather charts. Where you see the occluded front, you will end up getting weather, essentially your depression is dying. So whenever you see that, your depression is dying. So that essentially is what a depression uh, looks like and how it forms. Now, the key thing to recognise as well is that the weather that occurs is always the same as you move across a depression. So if we look at this then, the weather's always the same. So the key thing with the depression is that you have frontal rainfall coming across. So your warm front comes first. This is the front of your depression. Here you've got the warm front and you've got your cold front. So the warm front comes first. So if you are a place that is being hit by a depression, the first thing you'll get is a warm front. Now this slants up at an angle as the warm air, is, that warm, less dense air is pushing over that cold, denser air, comes in an angle. The first bit you'll get is some high clouds, those kind of very thin, wispy, cirrus clouds. They'll then be followed by slightly heavier clouds and you'll get a period of rainfall which can last for several hours. But it's relatively warm because it's the warm front which has got warm air behind it. So it's relatively warm rain, drizzle, never very heavy, but can be sustained for several hours. 
This front can be up to three to 400 meters long, so this can last for quite a while. You then get the warm sector. Here you're gonna have humid, but mostly dry, warm air. This will last for a period of time, perhaps six hours, eight hours, roughly. But this will always be followed by your cold front. The cold front's got this cold air catching up, so this cold front's much steeper. So it doesn't last for very long, but it is traditionally where you're gonna get the heaviest clouds, the heaviest rain. This is where you're gonna get your hailstorms, your thunderstorms. It's where you're gonna get really torrential bursts of rain for very short periods of time. The sort of thing that soaks you, but in a very sort of brief period of time. This will then be followed by cold air, which will be cold, but very dry. Winds will occur across this, but will be most intense where you get a, the biggest pressure gradient. So if you look at the angle of your front, you've got a very gentle pressure change here. You've got a very steep pressure change here. So you'll get winds, gentle winds here, far stronger winds just here, because you've got a bigger change in pressure at the cold front than the warm front. So the beauty of your depressions is that you just need to learn the, the process by which this happens. They're always the same. The intensity of the fronts is determined by how strong the pressure is. So if you look at a weather chart, you can see isobars, the closer together they are, the bigger the pressure difference, and therefore the more intense this will be. And it'll also be, if you look at the centre of your low, your depression, you'll always have a number, and that's your, be like 900 and something millibars. The smaller that number, the more intense the low. But the, what happens is always the same across it. A depression like this will pass across the UK in roughly one day. So they don't hang around for a long time, and it depends on the speed of a jet stream as to how quickly they occur. But if you then look at, this is a, kind of a classic exam question with a, a depression on it. Now, weather charts is something you should be able to look at and interpret. The examiners, I think, should always give you a fairly straightforward depression. So here you've got the UK, as you can see, it's being hit by a depression. It's got that classic shark's fin. There's your warm front, there's your cold front. The winds blow along the isobars. So, the winds, are, so you can see the winds are blowing in from here. So it's coming in from the Atlantic. It's going to have lots of warm, moist air. This suggests, if you look at the UK, that's just been hit by its warm front. So where you've got the warm front, we're expecting light rain here, light rain there. So the north of Scotland, the east coast particularly, is getting hit by that fairly light rain. The southeast of England here is being hit by sunshine because it's in the warm sector. So that's nice and warm and dry. But if you see the west of England, the west of Wales, west of Scotland, is being hit by that cold front. So here I'd expect really heavy rain, hail, thunderstorm, really intense but quite short period of rainfall. If you see up here in Scotland, the two fronts meet, so they're going to start to die out. So you've just got a period of continued wet weather. In a couple of hours' time, this cold front's going to have passed across the UK, and behind it, you'll be left with fairly dry but fairly cold weather. So essentially, this is something you could just learn by rote. Um, but it's something that the best students will be able to apply. And you could then look at this weather chart, for example. Now, because the weather's mostly coming from the west, what you can see here is a second depression building out in the north, in the Atlantic. And this is going to come, it's going to make its way across in this direction. So you can see how in approximately probably two days, the ice bars are quite far apart, so the winds are quite slow, but in about two days, this depression is going to end up hitting the UK. So that is depressions. You should be able to learn what they're like, why they form, and the weather associated with each aspect of it.